Hey there, welcome to Let's Make a Health Connection. In this podcast, we introduce, interview, and showcase the many healthcare providers and resources that we feature on our website, localhealthconnect.com. I'm Jennifer Barber, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Washington and Oregon, and I'm happy to be part of the Local Health Connect provider community. Today, we're talking to Stephanie Wickman, who goes by pronouns she, her. Stephanie identifies as a queer, able-bodied, curvy-bodied, white woman with learning differences. She is a clinical social worker and drama therapist who opened her private practice, Riverway Counseling, in 2019. For over 16 years, she's helped those affected by chronic illness and mental health challenges. Stephanie's passionate about working with LGBTQIA plus communities, working through various life adjustments such as grief and loss, relationship stress, changing careers, or coping with work and family. Stephanie loves to work in particular from a strengths-based and feminist framework, helping all people come to more peace with their bodies and relationship with food. She also has an extensive theater and comedy background and likes to incorporate humor, metaphor, and parts of self-work into therapeutic relationship. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. That's a bunch. You have had a a significant (laughs) background. That's a big intro. I like it. Don't you like it? It sounds so great. Oh my gosh. So tell us a little bit about this background. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, initially I started off in, you know, social work basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been, I'm an actor and an improviser comedian. And so early in my career, um, I learned about theater for social change and I worked with houseless youth in Portland. This was in my early twenties. And I started doing outreach theater with them. They had a program there, um, because they had some funding and we did, you know, they created their own plays and, um, it was just, that's what started my theater for change journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, more and more, I was like, I think I need more clinical experience. <laughs> so, you know, I went back for my grad degree at Portland state and, um, yeah. And then yay, since then, Portland state. yay, Portland state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so it, my career has just gone lots of different places, you know, um, I worked in hospitals and, you know, mental health settings, see you know, lots of different agencies and, um, uh, yeah, with just lots of different groups. Um, I think mostly in the, a lot of the themes are queer, kind of um, queer identified types of issues that come up and then body image are, are kind of the themes for mm-hmm. me, but um, also chronic illness. Um, worked a lot with folks with uh, who have been affected by cancer and disordered eating. So I think that um, a lot of the folks I work with are impacted, either have a family member or they themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing people in person or online or a little both. mix of both? It's a mix. It's a mix. I have some people who um, just do virtual and other people who are a mix. And sometimes I find that like um, someone will just want to come in once or twice to meet in person. So they get a good sense of me and, you know, we can kind of tune in uh, energetically and then, and then we're back to virtual people. Feel, they say, Oh, I feel, I feel more connected to you now, but I want to stay in my slippers. <laughs> yes, definitely. I don't know about you, but I'm wearing my slippers right now. <laughs> yeah, I, got you cozy, I got cozy socks, <laughs> okay. cozy socks. I love yes. the virtual world right here. Oh yeah. You know, this, this background of history that you're talking about, it just makes me think that there's so much creativity. And as a therapist, I think a lot of people who connect with that creative that have that creative mind might really like to know how you would bring creativity into the therapeutic room. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so really it's just opening up that space for however that, you know, what makes the most sense to that client and what's happening in the room. Um, and sometimes I, I mean, I might introduce it in a session, go, Hey, instead of like checking in how you're doing and saying it verbally, how would you like to do like a movement? just based on how you're doing today, Mm -hmm. right? So that you're actually engaging the body. So, or it could look like, um, like, I really want to give you a gift today. And it could be like an imaginary present, you know, like, um, like here is, you know, I have this box for you. If you open it up, it's filled with light and you can put it in your pocket when you're in your work meeting and feel calm, you know? So it's like, we, I I invite imagination into the space. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might look like a creative writing exercise for somebody, uh, or, you know, I have, uh, I've had artist clients who are musicians who want to do some, 
you know, perhaps some songwriting or write some lyrics based on what's happening for them. And so I just really encourage bringing that in and, and realizing that we don't have to be talking heads the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an element of humor too. And I think that when people read bios and maybe even listen to this podcast and they hear that you incorporate the creativity and also humor, you know, sometimes people relax a little bit. It's like, okay, this person isn't stuffy, right? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the humor piece. How do you connect with that? Yeah. So, uh, I just love, you know, if it's, if it works in the session and it, you know, laughter really does help and it does connect. And a lot of times when you're in the most pain and suffering, a lot of times you just want to go, boo, 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 you know, you want to literally like take it like this, like, I, I just, everything is falling apart and here I am. And we're like, everything is falling apart. Yes. Right. And so it's just like holding the hard, dark shadow places also with that, like the kind of human element of it and, and, and seeing the themes. And, and so I feel like you could, I feel like compassion and humor are really good. Uh, I don't know, cousins or companions or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, it's almost like we need it, like just like hope, right? Like those things that sometimes we can't connect to. And of course, if someone is using humor to avoid, then it's like, okay, what's happening here? I feel mm -hmm. like there's a joke, joke, joke versus like, let's get to the heart of what's happening. But yeah. Yeah. Do you work with kids? You know, I actually used to, but so far I've mostly been uh, working with young adults and mm -hmm. adults. And I do have some adolescent clients and I would take a couple of adolescents, I think. Um, but yeah, but mostly I would say older, older teens, young adults and adults. Mm -hmm. That older teen group, there's so much. I, I, I read, you know, in your bio, you're talking about transitions and that age group is just so rich and full of transition. It's such an interesting time to work yeah. with somebody. Yeah. And self-consciousness. <laughs> sometimes, oh, yes. so, so sometimes so the creativity, the creativity, like roller, you know, no, that's stupid. I do not want to do that. I'm uh -huh. like, okay. Okay. <laughs> On to something else. <laughs> right, right, right. You also say that you have a passion working with the LGBTQIA plus community. And I just want to stop for just a second and acknowledge and say thank you so much for opening your doors to all people, especially this population. So can you tell us a little bit about working with queer clients and, you know, what drew you to that and sure. keeps you there? Yeah. Well, you know, I myself identify as queer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I actually, so a little bit about my background, it's like generationally, um, I, my, I grew up with two dads um, along with my mother and her spouse. Um, so, you know, I grew up in, in gayness basically mm -hmm. um, from a young age and um, know how much that can impact somebody formatively. And also just, you know, there are just so many different nuances of that um, and walking through the world with those kinds of lenses. And so, yeah, I just, I'm really open to understanding and there's a lot, you know, just because I'm in that umbrella, they're just like, I am a, you know, a cis, uh, cis woman, right? So I work with a lot of trans clients, but I have to continually do training. And, you know, the person who's across from me is the expert because I don't have that lived experience. So I have to keep coming in and working on being humble. Um, because even though I'm in the umbrella, there's so much diversity and of experience of gender identity and, uh, sexuality, uh, you know, there's so many different aspects. It's just so rich, but there aren't enough services and there aren't enough places, I think, for queer folks to come in just to just be themselves or explore this idea of like, right. uh, you know what? I've been, um, I, I really, I really feel like I'm stepping into masculinity and femininity. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I, it's, it vacillates for me from day to day and I don't know how to express it and being able to just be in a space where you can hold that for somebody so that they can become, you know, s s more and more their best authentic selves. Mm -hmm. I love that. Again, thank you so much. Thanks for answering that question too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about working with people who have body image, eating disorders, and um, kind of what your background is with this and what people might expect when they're thinking, you know, this is something that I want to be in working working toward or on, how mm -hmm. might you begin work with someone who comes in with those issues? 
Yeah, it's so it's just it's so hard to actually come in to address these things. Uh, I've worked in a lot of different eating disorder settings. Um, there's so many different levels of care, like inpatient where someone needs to be hospitalized versus, you know, um, somebody who's just discovering um, that they're coming into disordered eating and um, they haven't really thought about it that much. And they just realize, oh my gosh, this is happening to me. So there's just such a wide range. Um, and there's a spectrum of disordered eating and dieting culture, which I think affects everybody, not this everybody who I see is affected by diet culture. And then all the way to sort of um, that just really feeling out of control and having those thoughts that, um, you know, about food in their body that are just uh, so hard. So I think coming in, you know, really, you know, where's this person at? And also if it's disordered eating, um, I often need a team of other people to work with, um, like a dietitian, because I you know, work within our own spheres, like um, not handling so much of the food pieces, but um, so it's, and then also a physician. So depending on where someone is at in their care, they really, you know, we need to monitor this too, because this is the, unfortunately part of the, um, some of the presentations are isolation, secrecy, you know, a part of you with disordered eating wants to be, um, wants to be seen and wants to heal. And other parts like, no, I need that. I absolutely need this. This has kept me mm-hmm. safe. This is my coping. I will, I can't let go of restricting. I can't let go of, of, of binging. Um, so it's really, so holding both things and trying to almost like, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more as I've gone from working almost from like, um, I would say harm reduction perspective, but sometimes there's like a, okay, you need to go to treatment right now. And sometimes, yes, it is that way. Like, okay, we need to, how do we get you major help, Mm -hmm. Um, which is really hard because some people aren't ready, even though they need it. Um, But at least like, what can we do to minimize risk for you? What can we do to hold this space for you when it's so hard and so distressing in this choice of coming in to get help? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Tell me a little bit, you, you had asked me to talk a little bit or ask you about the macro and social justice lens as it pertains to uh, body image and eating disorders. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So I think, and of course, coming from social work perspective, uh, I think a lot of the times, especially with body image pieces of, um, you know, or I'm not, I'm not good enough, or, you know, I need to lose this much weight and then I'll be okay. And then it'll be right to all of this. And, and then the voices come in our heads like, oh, you're not doing enough. You should, oh, you shouldn't have eaten that. Well, what's happening. Right. And so it, I really want, like to work with people on kind of deconstructing and stepping outside and going, okay, where are these voices coming from? Are these outside voices, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Sonia Renee Taylor, she's, she's got a, the body's not an apology, but she talks about outside voices versus inside voices and how we often internalize them as our own. It's our own truth when really it's like, wait a minute, whose voice is that? Mm -hmm. That's, that's society's voice. That's a patriarchal voice. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, this is, um, and, and we've made them our own. So it's like helping normalize how common this is and how hard this is, um, I think helps separate like, oh, maybe this just isn't me. And it takes away some of the shame and blame that comes. And uh, so I, I really like to come at it from just really looking at that out, those environmental pieces and also generationally. So it's like a lot of this we learn from our parents or our mothers or our fathers and, and like, where did they get, where did they get their messages? So it sort of helps with that thread. Totally. Um, yeah. Tell me about your approach. Is there a specific approach or um, theory base that you tend to work from or you're more comfortable with? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty, uh, honestly, I'm pretty eclectic and open. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, um, I I definitely use a lot of motivational interviewing and come from strengths-based approach. So there's even in, even when it's so bad or when someone's like, see, no one, no one wants to work with me or um, there's nothing good. It's like, okay, let's find something. There is something you're here. That is something, mm-hmm. right? You got up today, you took a shower. That is really something. Uh, so it's, so it's just really trying to find, uh, you know, what, what are the challenges, but also what is this person doing already and trying to work on that to build confidence. And sometimes I love the mindfulness based pieces. Um, and I think I do use quite a bit of like, uh, CBT, too, Mm -hmm. uh, because I think it helps almost like a mindfulness based CBT, if I were to kind of put it into 
into a bracket just because yeah. I feel like it needs to be both um, working on what's happening as with our thoughts and in our head and our behaviors and also stopping, pausing, uh, really trying to work being in the present into the work. Great. Great. Yeah. You explain that fabulously. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, where do you practice? Where can people find you either online or in person? Yeah. So, um, so I have a, a fabulous office, uh, an officer's row, uh, which is three days a week. Uh, do you want the address or just? Sure. Just, yeah. Yeah. So it's 951 officer's row and it's a really lovely location and, and actually, um, uh, we can offer maybe a little bit of walk and talk or being outside in nature, which is really cool for that, mm. that setting. Um, and then I uh, have a all virtual day, which is Thursday. Um, but I weave in virtual sessions at the office too. Great. So Monday through Thursdays are my, those are my days. Great. And how might people find you online? Social so, media presence. <laughs> so I, so it's um, www.riverwaycounseling.com. Great. And I do have a Facebook page that's Riverway Counseling. R I V E R W A Y. Uh, yeah. And, and I guess if, yeah, we will add those to the show notes so that anybody okay. listening to this, they'll have a little tag at the end of the video so they can go directly to those. So the website and the Facebook. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? Do you have anything you want to share with people that might help just kind of connect you to them a little cl more closely? Yeah. Um, thoughts or maybe even share things that you might have coming up or things that you're working on right now yeah yeah well I mean in personal life it's just getting back into improv mm -hmm. <laughs> doing some comedy around right. town you know like I'm, I'm kind of like it's like people I feel like people are sort of returning returning the great return right yes. and and we're supposed to be okay it's like we're supposed to be productive and okay it's now we're let's move on and, and people are so not ready or need more holding or more space for what has happened and and not even before the pandemic but before that right yeah. um so just i think i just knowing that i you know i have a big heart space and understand struggle even though i don't have your lived experience of struggle and just knowing that like coming in it's important to come in and to have someone just be with you during this and i um i'd love to yeah, get to know, mm -hmm. you know, new clients and, and offer, offer help if I can. Great. So Stephanie Wickman with Riverway Counseling, thank you so much for being here today, for doing this, this interview and letting people know that you're out there and who you are. And I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Jen. All right. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks. Thanks again for listening to Let's Make a Health Connection. Find us online at localhealthconnect.com, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links and show notes for this interview are available on our podcast page. These interviews are really fun, and I hope you made a health connection today. We'll talk again next time. Let's Make a Health Connection, copyright 2022, all rights reserved, is the exclusive property of MBS Therapy, LLC, a Washington-based company. Local Health Connect is inclusive and does not endorse any political or religious group. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time on localhealthconnect.com.